Chairman, I want to begin by congratulating the member who's just resumed his seat for an extraordinary effort to make something out of very little. It was a commendable effort, and I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure that it le it, it's a, a good lead-in to the line that he will follow throughout the remainder of this debate. Let me remind the committee what we're actually debating this morning. We're debating the taxation, annual rates, Trans-Tasman Savings Portability, Kiwi Saver and Remedial Matters Bill 2009. This is the bill, sir, that came into the House last November to make, as the member concedes, a number of worthy changes that most people actually support. This is not a bill to debate measures that have only just been put into the public arena yesterday and which will be the subject of public debate over the next few months and will lead to some decisions being made which will come to this House next year. Mr Chairman, the member also made some comments about the changes that the SOP, which is 13 pages, not 28, introduces to the GST regime. And I found that rather extraordinary. I appreciate the member wasn't in the House at the time. I was when the Labor government in 1989 increased the rate of GST from 10 to 12.5%. And the contrast with what's happened now and what happened at that point is worth bringing to the attention of the House. In 1989, in May, the government announced an increase in the rate of GST from 10 to 12.5% to take effect from the 1st of July that year. Eight weeks lead time. There was no compensation paid to low-income groups or to anyone on a benefit or any form of fixed payment that might be adversely affected. Contrast that with this year's changes. Announced in May, taking effect on the 1st of October, full compensation for all those on fixed incomes and benefits, superannuation, etc., including National Provident Fund and Government Superannuation Fund recipients. A vast change from the 1989 situation. In 1989, all of the issues around the transformation had to simply be just adjusted to by business within the space of eight weeks. This year, we established the GST advisory panel for the specific purpose of allowing those who were going to have some technical impact upon them as a consequence of the rate change to have their issues considered and for those issues to then be, if they required a legislative solution, addressed in this bill when it came to the House at this time. So the SOP, and I gather from the member's comments that he actually supports the provisions in the SOP, deals with a number of taxpayer-friendly situations that will give specific relief to a number of the issues that have arisen, laybys, for instance, the issue of insurance contracts, so on and so forth, all of which fall over that particular transition period. So, Mr Chairman, I find his complaint that this is the oops or whatever it was, we should have done it better uh, the, the last time round measure, to be somewhat ironic, given the history where last time his party was in a position to change the GST rate, it was simply the rate takes effect from this date, you fall where you may in terms of your compliance with it. What we've done through the GST advisory committee of, of the panel and for the amendments that are here is give some clarity and some certainty to the business community and to the consumers of New Zealand who will be affected by that change. Now, finally, Mr Chairman, I was grateful for the member's confirmation by the roundabout way in which he spoke of something that I've long suspected was the Labor Party's long-term agenda with regard to savings and taxation. Uh, when he spoke about the work of the tax working group and the fact that the government chose not to implement some of its recommendations, it was clear that he was signalling that land tax, capital gains tax and some of those other measures that this government has so specifically ruled out are very much on the agenda of his party. And it's good as the debate begins to have that on the record that the Labor Party is saying we will introduce a capital gains tax and a land tax. That's great to have as part of the ongoing debate. Mr Chairman, this bill is substantially user-friendly. It makes a lot of changes in terms of savings portability with Australia, in terms of the implementation of the GST changes and other matters that have been the subject of some public angst for a while, which are now being addressed in a way that is satisfactory and favourable to the interests of most taxpayers, and therefore I commend it to the House.
I call 